Jose uh, is a former Wisconsin DOT uh, engineer who is uh, very involved in a number of our operations, notably bridge management. Jose also spent a uh, considerable amount of time at AASHTO as a program manager working with uh, bridge preservation and uh, other programs, uh, including their software. Um, and uh, currently, Jose's position is as a transportation uh, manager uh, for uh, one, uh, one of Baker's offices. So uh, with that, uh, help me welcome Jose. <clears throat> as I find your presentation. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, before I get into my presentation, I want to just give a plug to Michigan DOT. Uh, in all these years, I've been fortunate to look at data from many states in terms of both uh, deterioration and uh, cost. And Michigan has one of the best sets of that. So if you, I don't know, if, if you want to take a look at it, um, uh, to if you are, especially if you are starting with with this, it will be good uh, for, for you to check them out. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say is about the they have enough information that, in my opinion, it wouldn't be too difficult to use that time to pour to calibrate the models for the different elements. Uh, my presentation pretty much complements both. Uh, what David uh, and Bill presented before. Um, I think that uh, it's going to cover a lot of the questions that were asked in terms of how the, the level of detail that you have to go to actually uh, uh, identify preservation needs and costs. Um, I know the first slide, it will be kind of a repetition. We, I think you have seen this, uh, uh, well, the, the next slide. Um, many times, uh, but it's just a plug for the uh, bridge preservation uh, uh, web, uh, uh, web training class that NHI has. Is th this is the slide from the, from the class and also mimics the Federal Highway Guide in classifying what bridge preservation is. It, to the side is rehabilitation, to the other side is uh, preventive maintenance, then in preventive maintenance, you get your condition activities and cyclical non-condition activities. Uh, based on the comments from the uh, subject matter, matter experts, we put icons or under each one of those. We just identify that rehab always is more money. Condition-based activities, you have to look for them. And the cyclical, you just schedule them. So now, now that we have that understanding, also, we have uh, built, addressed the goals, objectives, and, and, and measures. Um, we talk a lot about, uh, with Michigan, with they, in terms of how they do the inventory and condition assessment. And basically, he also touched on the needs assessment. Um, the presentation is pretty much focused on that process, the needs assessment and data management. Caveat, this is just a, an example of what states can do. It's not the formula to success. As you can see, uh, Michigan decided to break the initial components a little bit more and separate and have a program for rehabilitation and replacement and have isolated preventive maintenance or preservation in terms of, uh, 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 I mean, uh, uh, preventive maintenance on the other side. But regardless of the, how do you address those, Still, in terms of the needs assessment, what you need is data. And for the data, you need the inventory, the condition assessment, your preservation activities that you will prescribe based on the condition, and the cost. Then you can use Michigan's approach. You can use BRM done by Ashto that will deliver. And that will do the analysis. What's interesting about what BRM will bring is that it will combine recommended actions by inspectors, something that they mentioned, and will make it compete with BRM recommendations. So it will put all those work items into the hopper and come up with a recommendation for particular projects. 
and there will, that will do the assessment for you. In terms of the data component of, all, of the, the, that graph, uh, in terms of prioritizing, uh, in, in terms of the inventory information, you need to just have some sort of idea what the up ADT is, because a bridge with low ADT should have a less of a priority than uh, a bridge with high ADT. Uh, in the data component also, you, you have a condition data, national bridge elements, bridge management elements, agency defined elements, and NBI condition ratings. Um, because of the way Ashto guided the software development, it really pretty much mandated or obligated to people that were using the software to do dual inspections because there's not a converter anymore to convert national bridge elements to NBI condition ratings to report. So basically, when you are doing that, you have to do both the element inspection and the NBI condition rating. And that's something that when I was in Wisconsin, they were very, uh, the, the, at the time, they were district maintenance engineers, now they are region uh, maintenance engineers. They were very leery about using the translator. So they said, well, sort of the cost. We, it, it's nothing, it's, it's not an extra effort. And we will collect information at the NBI level and we'll collect information at the uh, core element level. So those two are pretty much given. Everybody has it. So what is more difficult to find is the cost. But because we do a very good job of recording inventory information, we do a very good job of recording condition data, but we're not, we don't do a very good job in, con in co collecting costs. As I said, I've been fortunate to look at the information from a few states, and if we wanna take a uh, look at uh, uh, good cost information, uh, go to Michigan and go to uh, South Dakota. Also, they have very good information from the states that I, that I, I have uh, analyzed data. Um, for Wisconsin, Michael Baker International uh, is helping them collect this information. So we, we kind of devised this uh, preservation uh, bridge element cost elicitation form. And the way we de de devise it is to use what is in the NHI training for bridge preservation and put those as typical practice on the form and also allow Wisconsin to put their own practice because that's what they wanna concentrate because they may decide not to do some of the prescribed activities that are in the NHI training. So in order to have consistency uh, in the data collection, we also put a second page for that particular element indicating what that particular activity entail like what bridge cleaning entails, what bridge washing entails, for every single action for that particular element. We did it for protection, for replace, for re rehabilitation, and for replacement. So we wanted to collect all those costs. Now that, uh, when that is done, with the analysis components is the uh, criteria for prescribed actions that Bill described you can just look at those thresholds and see which bridges qualify for a particular condition-based or uh, cyclical activity. And in the future, when BRM is deployed, uh, they will be able to do that on the run, plus do a life, life cycle cost analysis. Right now, we're not at that point yet. By the way, for those that are, that are interested, uh, Ashto BRM just released uh, 522, and it only includes the cost for uh, inspection, uh, recommend, inspector recommended work items. The deterioration rates are there, but the analysis to populate the, the ones that BRM will recommend, it will come up in the next, in the next uh, next version. That will be the planning activities and all that. So 
there is a need uh, for for that project to to come alive so people uh, in different states that are using it can 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 do this analysis well in in, in terms of, uh, of the NHI training, also they say, well, we, they say that the total needs are equal to the cyclical plus condition-based pro-rehabilitation based. So those are your bridge preservation needs. And the total needs of the bridge preservation program are based on inventory, condition, and cost. So if you got 500,000, 900,000 for condition base and a million for rehabilitation, then your total needs will be 2,400,000. That is also part of the NHI training when we use a set of bridges from the state of Michigan to just come up with recommendations. In terms of the strategy, Bill described what the goals, objectives, and performance measures they have. So now is the time to work on identifying those needs and prioritize those needs. And that's going to be based on different uh, risk criteria. SCOUR is one. Uh, there, there is, uh, BRM is going to include uh, uh, a set of risk factors that states can use in, as uh, out of the box, and you can add your own too. So then the, your best strategy is defining price, the budget that's approved, you budget match with the needs, the works plan, and prevent and maintenance they give, given a, a high priority. So in other words, in summarizing this, you first evaluate your needs, you perform an analysis using uh, the time to pour, or whatever BRM is going to bring, or any other software that you may have, you identify the work candidates, you put those into a project, and the projects go into a, into a program. And this is ma basically the philosophy that BRM is going to, the, the, the new version of Pontus, most of you are familiar with the word Pontus, BRM is what is going to, um, is, is what Pontus has migrated to. And that's the philosophy. So programs are the big thing. So you may have your uh, bridge rehabil rehabilitation program. You may have your uh, prevented maintenance program and divide it based on, on different types of funding. But the process is pretty much the same. You uh, pretty much, you get an initial selection from the uh, prevented maintenance condition based activities, something that uh, you can get with uh, the time to pour or, or, or BRM. You add your cyclical activities because those are based on triggers and in frequency. Then in order to do that, then is where the analysis comes. You group by cost effectiveness. Every work item should have a benefit cost ratio. So you, you combine by location. That's also something that they alluded. And then you may add them by similar activity or, or timing, because you may want to delay or move ahead projects because of the timing, especially in what we have seen in terms of our vendors, and especially with the joints. See, there are times where you cannot do the, because of the weather, it doesn't qualify to those activities. So you need to be thinking about those things too, and that's what it gets into the process. Then you get to evaluate the project, and that's, this is uh, where it's very interesting. In BRM, I mentioned there are two types of costs, right? One is, or activities, one is that the BRM is going to recommend, and the second one is that the one that uh, the, the work items that are recommended by a bridge inspector. The work items that are recommended by the bridge inspector are very well defined, so those costs are real costs. And as opposed to the other ones that you're entering generic costs that you have to refine once you take that recommendation from BRM, you have to just elevate it to the work candidate uh, 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 by an inspector level. So you look into how much uh, traffic control is gonna, uh, is gonna cost, mobilization is gonna cost. So that's when you evaluate the project. Once you approve that, then it goes to the program, and you just put, this is, we're going to do this and this program in this particular year. 
And in the program uh, scheduling process, you, get, you, you have almost the same process. Now you have a bunch of, of projects that are made out of work items. And then from the program perspective, you add or remove projects. Funding may not be available that year, so you might have to take them out. Uh, you adjust projects by uh, priorities and rank, risk-based, risk again, for the, whole, for the whole program. You set your budgets and you allocate the funding by the year. You go to the next step, you evaluate the program, and if you approve, then it gets scheduled. And that's it. Well, pretty much the process is uh, you can follow those flow charts by hand. Good luck with that because it is a very <laughs> labor intensive process. But hopefully, BRM uh, will be uh, ready for everybody soon. And so everybody can benefit from that. Without any questions? I, I was just curious, since you seem to know BR, what's going on with BRM pretty well, is there going to be a module or a part of it that will that will basically calculate the benefit, you know, you know, looking at actions that have happened in the past and associating costs with it and then saying the cost benefit ratio of this was this based on how long this, this action lasted or some sort of criteria. Uh, yes, uh, the answer is yes. Actually, BRM is going to have one of the uh, very much improved life cycle cost analysis in, in, embedded into it. It will allow you to evaluate the benefit cost as, as a work item, as a project, and as a program. So that's what is going to make it easy because uh, th one of the questions that I would have if I were you sitting on the other side is how do you evaluate the projects for cost effectiveness when each work item has in its own? So you're going to be able to group them. Um, the other thing that uh, is going to allow you to be even more, I guess, granul granular in terms of the analysis is the use of utility functions. And, and, and risk is one of the utility functions. And there are other ones that you can, you can just put in. So anything that, I any custom prioritization methodology uh, that you, you can think of, you will, as long as it complies with the data, you will be able to embed. All right. All right, thank you.